This is the University of Georgia Main Library. Its roots go back to 1799 when a committee prepared a list of books to be housed in the first building on campus. A wooden structure erected then at a total cost of $187.27. In 1821, the library moved to Waddell Hall, the second oldest building on campus, which now houses the University Press. Later on in the 19th century, the library occupied two other structures, both of which now form parts of the academic building. Then in 1905, the library was moved into what is now the Georgia Museum of Art, where it remained for nearly 50 years. The Isla Dunlap Little Memorial Library, shown here, forms the old section of the present building and has been the home of the University Library since 1953. In 1974, the library opened this nine-story annex. The structure cost about five million dollars and provides almost four and one-half football fields worth of space. This new section is reached through the entrance to the old building. A side door leads only to the Richard B. Russell Memorial Library in the sub-basement. The Russell Library contains the papers and memorabilia of the late Senator Russell and other Georgia congressmen. There are two branch libraries on campus. The Law Library, just a short walk from here, is open to undergraduates for research, but not for study. The Science or South Branch Library is in the Graduate Studies Building and is available for research and study. I'm here to show you a little about our libraries. We feel you students should have a chance to learn how to find the information you'll need in the future as your studies go beyond the range of your textbooks. There are three libraries on campus, but in this program we'll be talking primarily about the main library. Now this library is an open stack building, which means you are free to explore the shelves without supervision. Open stack is just one of many specialized terms used by librarians. Throughout this program, we'll be using many such terms, but we'll try to explain them as we go along. Now, the basic content of the main library, well, of all the libraries, is not just to serve as a storehouse for books, but rather to be an information center. Its content is not limited to books. There are maps, photographs, newspapers, magazines, audio cassettes, and other items, just too numerous to mention. However, knowing what's in the library isn't enough either. We also want you to know how to find the information and how to use basic tools which can provide shortcuts to that information. As you enter the front doors, the reference department is straight ahead at the end of the corridor. Let's continue with our talk in there. Your first stop on every visit to the library should be the reference room. It could be called the information room because here's where you'll find the basic tools which will help you to locate materials in the rest of the library. Here you will find basic reference tools such as dictionaries, encyclopedias, atlases, indexes to magazines and newspapers, as well as college catalogs, telephone directories, and other helpful materials. You may well spend some of your most productive hours in the library in this area. We will try to explain some of the various catalogs and guides now. Later, when you come into the library to use these tools, you can always ask a staff member for help if you have any problems. Materials in both the main and science libraries, but not the law library, are listed in this card catalog. The card catalog contains over five million cards representing over one and one half million books. It is divided into two parts, an author title section and a subject section. For example, if you want a book on population, you can locate it under the subject heading of population. If, however, you want The Hobbit by T.R.R. Tolkien, you could locate it in the author title section by the author's name or by the title. When you find what you are looking for in the card catalog, you should write down the entire call number you find in the upper left-hand corner of the card. It may look something like this, or this. Be sure you write down everything exactly as it appears on the catalog card. 
Then look at the nearby location chart to determine where the book is shelved. If there is anything you do not understand about the call number, and if the location chart doesn't help, ask a librarian. You may otherwise end up looking on the fourth floor for something that is on microfilm in the basement. Why don't we practice finding a book through the card catalog? All right. Why don't we start with the subject we mentioned earlier, the population explosion? Okay. First, we will look in the subject catalog back here. Everything is filed in alphabetical order by subject. So the population explosion is found in the drawer marked POP to population, population H. H. Here, here is, is a likely looking, looking prospect. prospect. The, the silent, silent explosion, explosion by, by Philip, Philip Appleman. This, this book, book could also, also have been located by the, by the title, title or author, author in the author, author title, title catalog. catalog. Here, Here are, are all three, three cards, cards with their various headings. headings. All, all of them, of course, have the same call number, HB851A48. After you find the card, write down the call number. Now that you have the call number, you can find the book. First, look at the nearest location chart. The HB classification is located on the fifth floor of the annex. On each floor is an office where staff members are available if you need help. According to the plan, HB is located to the left of the staff office. On the end of each range or row of shelves is a sign indicating what books are on those shelves. We want the range marked HB 539 to HC 101. As you walk down the row, compare the call numbers on the books with the number you wrote down looking for an exact match. There are two copies of this book on the shelf. It may provide a good background for the subject. If the book you want is not there, check the sorting shelves on that floor. It is possible that the book has been returned, but has not been put back where it belongs. If you still can't find the book, you can ask one of the circulation staff members to check to see if the book has been charged out. If it has been out for two weeks, it can be call recalled for you. After you find the book, you will see that there are other books relating to the same subject in that area. That makes it easy to browse if the first book you find doesn't contain the information you want. Since the copyright date is 1965, you may want more up-to-date information. More recent material can be found in periodicals, that is, magazines, journals, or newspapers. Their indexes are located in the reference room. There are several indexes to recent periodicals. These cover a wide variety of subjects, such as education, business, music, and art. A popular index is the Reader's Guide to Periodical Literature. It indexes the more popular American magazines and journals by year, then alphabetically by subject. If you have never used these indexes before, or if you have a problem, ask a librarian for help. There are several ways to locate your magazine. When you have selected an article you would like to read, write down the title, volume, date, and page number of the periodical. You can get the call number for the magazine by looking up the title in the author title catalog, or we can look up the title in the current periodicals list or go downstairs to the basement and use the serials catalog. Mm -hmm. Since you already know about the author title catalog, why don't we go downstairs to the basement and we can use the other two sources. Okay. okay? Sure. Once you have the basic information, look up the name of the periodical in the current periodicals list, a computer printout showing periodicals the libraries currently receive and their call numbers. There is a copy of this list on every floor of the library. If the periodical you are searching for is not in the current periodicals list, 
the libraries may still have the title you need. To find out, you could again check the card catalog to see if that title is listed, or check the serials catalog located here in the basement. The serials catalog lists all periodicals ever received by the libraries and which volumes we have in our collections. It is the most complete available guide to our periodicals collection. The basement is as popular an area for research and study as the reference room, and in addition offers several thousand current issues of periodicals arranged alphabetically by title for easy access. Many students come down here to read for pleasure or to keep up with various magazines and journals in their fields. In addition to the other periodicals, the libraries subscribe to many newspapers from all over the world. There is a collection of Georgia newspapers, papers from large American cities, and from several world capitals, many in English and some in foreign languages. To one side of the current periodicals room is the microform area. Here you can find microfiche, microcard, microfilm, are the various names of the photographically reduced editions of books, periodicals, and newspapers. These microforms are listed with the other materials in the card catalog and current periodicals list, above the call numbers of the symbols for each kind of microform. The location chart again lists the location of materials under that symbol. To use the microforms, reading machines are available in the current periodicals area. If you have never operated one of the machines, a staff member can show you how. Since periodicals may not be charged out of the libraries, you may want to make your own copies of some articles. There are several types of copiers available in the libraries. For a nickel, you can use one of these coin-operated machines, which are located on most floors of the libraries. The copy room is located just across from the periodicals office. Inside the copy room itself, there are 10-cent copiers. These copies are very hard to distinguish from the originals, especially for typewritten work. The copy room provides machines which can also make transparencies, reproductions of pictures, reduction copies from this to as small as this. If you need paper copies of microforms, a library staff member can help you. This collection includes books relating to the entire range of fine arts, a collection of color prints, and a large audio listening facility. Audio cassette machines and headphones are available for student listening, with a selection of thousands of cassettes. This collection includes music of all types, classical, jazz, and rock, as well as plays, lectures, learning modules, and foreign language lessons. Many students studying plays have found that they get more out of their studies if they listen to a tape of a performance as they read the dialogue. Cassettes may be listened to in the library or they may be charged out. To use a cassette, you must present a valid student ID with current certificate of registration. The libraries offer technical services in addition to information facilities. For instance, audio production and photo services in our electromedia department in the sub-basement of the old building. For special projects, you may have black and white photographic work of all kinds done here, from developing and printing to microfilming and photostatic reproduction. The audio production services offer recording in two or four track stereo on reel-to-reel -reel or cassette tapes. Also, for your convenience, there are typing rooms, smoking rooms, and a student lounge with book lockers and vending machines in the main library. If 
you are interested in history, especially of Georgia and the South, you should visit the Special Collections Department on the third floor of the old building. Materials in these collections are made available to qualified researchers during the hours posted. Special restrictions may be enforced for certain rare or fragile materials. The Special Collections Department is divided into several sections. Georgiana contains a growing collection of books published by Georgia authors and books published in or about Georgia. The manuscript section has items such as letters, which are handwritten rather than printed, and the rare book section contains old and valuable books. Part of this priceless collection is the Duren Library, which includes the original Constitution of the Confederate States of America. In addition, a number of personal libraries, which include a wide range of rare materials, are part of the University of Georgia libraries. These collections may be on any subject, but they are rare and valuable enough to require supervision. Many of you may have noticed the entrance to the building on the west side of the main library. It is the entrance to the Richard B. Russell Memorial Library, another special collection. This area is locked off separately from the main portion of the library. It houses the papers of the late Senator Russell and 14 other members of Congress. Presently, the Russell Library exhibit area is open from 8 to 5 on weekdays. The Russell papers are not yet available for research since they are still being processed by the Russell staff. Another area of the library that can be of great benefit is the document section on the second floor of the annex. A document is a publication issued by a governing body, for example, the United Nations or the government of France. The University of Georgia libraries have most of the material published by the United States government. These documents cover an incredible range of subjects, and probably any subject, from geological surveys to how to build a birdhouse. Also included are such materials as a congressional record, which is a printed copy of all proceedings and speeches in the House and Senate of the United States. Materials in the government documents collection may be found only through the catalogs and indexes on the second floor of the annex. They are not entered in the main card catalog. Most documents can be checked out for two weeks. Certain restricted items, however, do not circulate outside the library. The circulation department controls the comings and goings of all library materials. The staff picks up and shelves materials left on tables, a service that makes sure that each book may be found in its proper place. They also show returned books and keep track of who has checked out books. Before any book may be taken out of the libraries, it must first be checked out, or as we say, charged out, at the circulation desk. Charge cards are located on the tables around the circulation desk. You should fill out a separate card for each book, being sure to include all information requested on this card. Then give the card and book to a staff member at the circulation desk, along with your student ID with current certificate of registration. You don't need a library card. The staff member will stamp the book with the date due. Most materials can be charged out for four weeks, but some are restricted to shorter periods, so be sure to check the date due. The reserve desk is another part of the circulation department. An instructor may put books on reserve if there will be a great demand for them. These books may circulate for two hours, overnight, or three or seven days. To locate a reserve book, simply come to the reserve desk and look in the reserve file under your instructor's name. Find the title you need and give the call number to a staff member at the desk. She will get the book for you and mark the time due on it. Fines for overdue reserve books are charged hourly. Because we are an open stack library, we must check outgoing books to be sure they have been properly charged out. In the main library, outgoing books are checked manually by staff members, while the science library uses electronic sensors. When the libraries are open, return books through the slot at the circulation desk. That is all you have to do if there is no overdue fine to pay. For your own protection, do not leave a book on top of the desk. If another student picks it up, you are responsible for any fines incurred. 
If you lose a book, report it immediately to the circulation department. You will be given two weeks without fines to locate it. If you don't find the book within two weeks, you will have to pay for it. When the libraries are closed, books may be put into the outdoor book return boxes located in front of the main library and at other convenient places around campus. It is advisable to return a book to the library from which it is charged out. If you return it to a different building, it may not reach the proper location before it becomes overdue. During your stay at the university, you should be able to find any information you need at one of our three branches. We invite you to come in to study, to browse, to read for enjoyment, or to do research. While we don't expect you to remember all that we've told you today, we do hope that you will remember this one important point. If you ever have any problem at all using any of our facilities, please ask a staff member for help. All of us are glad to answer your questions.